What is up guys? In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how you can create a facial recognition in Python. And let's go ahead and run the program immediately to show you what it can do. So let's pretend we want to recognize Trump, Boris and Putin. We are going to select an image. And once that image has been selected, it's going to insert the nice frames that locates the images and it's going to put a name on them such as Boris, Trump and Putin. And let's go ahead and rerun this program with a different image. So let's click on this one over here of Boris and Trump. And you'll notice that it will find the faces and put a frame around them here as well. So to locate the faces, you're going to want to have a folder with the images of the people you want to locate. So all you have to do right now is go ahead and right click and create a directory and just call those people just like I did over here. And inside here, you want to insert some faces that will be used later to recognize the people that you want to find. So for this example, I put Boris, Putin and Trump, but you can put any face you want. Just make sure to name them in a way that you can remember them later, or especially when it puts the labels on the photos, you want it to have a relevant label. So go ahead and create this folder with the people you want inside. And once you have done that, we should actually go to our terminal because you need to install a few packages that I already installed, but uh, let's go ahead and show you which packages you need. So pip list. The main ones you're going to need is this face recognition and CMake. I recommend you install CMake first and then face recognition because the first time I installed it, it told me I was missing CMake. And then we need the face recognition package. And just as a warning, that might take several minutes to download. For me, it took maybe five to 10 minutes. And that's why in this project, I already have it set up because it takes far too long for the purpose of the video to reinstall. Once you've installed that, I believe it includes by default NumPy and OpenCV. But if you do not have those, just type in pip install and install these packages as well until you have all of these packages installed into your project. But as soon as you are done with that, we can actually close this and get started with writing the code. So the first thing we want to import is our face recognition. And it's going to look like this. And we are going to import it as FR for face recognition. Then we want to import CV2. And by the time you're watching this video, it might be CV3, it might just be CV, but we are going to import it as CV in case the version changes in the future. So it won't break the code in case we do have to update it. Then we want to import from takeinter TK. And again, we're going to type in from takeinter. And this time we want to open a file dialog. So we're going to type in import ask open file name. And finally, we need to import OS and this will help us find the file directories. So the very first thing we want our program to do is to ask us which file it would like us to analyze. And to do this, we just have to call TK. And we also want to say withdraw. Then we want to create a variable that says load image. And this will be the image variable that we will search for later. And we just have to call ask open file name. And let's not fair the parentheses over here. Then we have to create another variable. And this is going to be the image that we want to be analyzed by the face recognition. So we're going to type in target image. And that's going to equal face recognition or FR load image file. And it's going to be the image that we just loaded from take a inter. And then we need to actually turn this into an encoded file. So we're going to type in target encoding. And that's going to equal FR dot face encodings and it's going to take the target image. And now let's just go ahead and print the target encoding so you can see what that is. And we're just going to right click to run the program. So let's select this picture of Boris Johnson. And you will see that it will return to us a lot of values. And these values are used to compare images to other images. And that's the very simple version of it. But uh, we can actually get rid of that now that you know what that is. And the next thing we have to do is create a function that is going to encode multiple faces. So we're going to type in encode faces, and we are going to take a folder as as a parameter, then inside here, we want to create a list of people that have been encoded. So we're just going to call it list people encoding. And that's going to equal a list, then below that, we can go ahead and type in for file name in OS list directory, 
And inside here, we're just gonna pass in the folder. It's going to look for all of the images in the folder. So, so inside here, we're gonna type in known image and that's going to equal face recognition dot load image file. And we need to create a formatted string. So F and that. And we have to add some curly brackets because inside here we want to insert the folder as a directory and we want to get the appropriate file name in the folder. So it's going to loop through all of the images in the folder and turn it into an image file. And down here, we need to turn that into an encoded file. So known encoding is going to equal FR face encodings. And inside here, we need to insert the known image at the index of zero. Then we are going to add to our list of people encoding. So list people encoding append. And inside here, we're going to add a tuple, which is going to contain known encoding and and the file name. And once we have looped through all of the images in the folder, we can just return the list. So return list of people encoding. The next thing we have to do is create a function that looks for the target faces. So it's going to loop through all of the faces and it's going to put a label only on the ones that we are searching for. And to do this, we're going to create another function called find target face. And the first thing we have to do inside here is get the face locations, but I'm just going to call it face location. And that's going to equal fr dot face locations of the target image. So it's going to get all of the faces that are located in the image. And then we can later use those to compare those to the current images that we have. Then the next thing we have to do is create a for loop, which will say for person in encoded faces. And then we have to provide a folder. And in my case, it's going to be the people folder, but you can put in whatever directory you want. An easy way to find a directory for your folders is just to right click on it and copy the path. And for this case, we'll just copy the path from the content root. Then we can just paste it inside there. So as you can see, it will say people and I'll just add a slash. Then inside this loop, we're going to create a variable called encoded face, which is going to equal our person at the index of zero which will give us the known encoding. And let me just refactor that because I prefer it to be called known. And for the second value, we'll just create something called file name, which is going to equal person at the index of one, which is going to give us the file name for each person that's inside this folder. Then for each face, we want to check if it is the target face. So we're going to type is target face and we have to call our fr dot compare faces and it's going to take the encoded face and it's going to compare it to a target face, which is going to be our target encoding. And I also want to show you that you can specify a tolerance and the lower the number is, the more accurate the face has to be, which means a lower tolerance will make it harder for the program to recognize faces, but a higher tolerance will make more accidents, let's say. So for this example, I thought 0.55 was good, the default is 0.6 and the documentation says that's pretty good. But in my case, I thought I'll go for 0.55. You're more than welcome to play around with that because you might notice that some faces will be recognized regardless of what they look like. For example, Trump and Boris sometimes look alike and there is a small chance that it will recognize Boris as Trump. So that's why I have a more strict tolerance, even if it's only by 0.05, it works for me. Next, I created a print statement just to see what this does. And here I inserted a pair of curly brackets, which said is target face. And it also showed who we were searching for. So file name, and this will return to us a list of booleans, which just clarifies who has which face. And this just tells us which face we're looking for. Then we can write if face location is true, which means there has been a face located, we can continue on with the code. Otherwise, if face location is false, it means there are no faces. So there's nothing to be done. So if face location is true, we're going to type in face number is going to equal zero. And this is just so we can iterate through this later. And we're going to type in for location in face location, if it is the target face at the index of the current face we are iterating through, then we want to provide a label which is going to equal the file name and we want to create a frame for that face. So we'll type in create frame and inside here we should insert a location and the label. And each time we iterate through this loop, we want to increase the face number 
by one. So plus equals one. And let's go back here and add a comma instead. So this function right here will just take care of actually finding the faces and providing labels for them. Now we have to go ahead and create two more functions. One will create the frame and one will render the image. But we are almost done. So the next one we have to create is def create frame, which is going to take a location and a label. Then we have to type in top, right, bottom, and left. And that's going to equal the location. And the next thing we have to do inside here is call CV. And we are going to call rectangle. It's going to be for the target image. And the first thing we have to insert is the left and the top coordinates. Then we have to add a comma and insert the right and the bottom coordinates. And then we have to specify a color, which is going to be red. So for this example, we can just do 255, zero, and zero. And we need to specify a border thickness, which we are going to leave at two. And then we have to create a rectangle for the text box so to do this, we can just go ahead and copy this and put this right here. So we just have to modify this slightly. And instead of left top, it's going to be left bottom plus 20. And instead of having a border, we are going to change this to CV dot filled. And then we have to go ahead and call CV dot put text for our target image. And this is going to take a label. And then we need to also specify the location of the text. So left plus three and bottom plus 14. And you do need to experiment around with these values because it will be different from screen to screen. But for my computer, this was perfect. It worked great. And we can also specify a font. So we're going to use font Hershey duplex. And we want the font size to be 0 0.4. And finally, we should specify a color and a thickness. And I think black is great. So we're going to just go 255, 255, 255 with a thickness of one. And finally, all that's left is to actually render the image. So we're going to type in def render image. And the first thing we want to do is change the image back to a colorful image, because you'll notice that if we render it without this keyword, we will have an image in a weird color. So we're going to change it back to RGB. And we're just going to call it RGB image. And that's going to equal CV dot CVT color. And it's going to take our target image. And we have to also call CV dot color underscore BGR to RGB. Then we can call CV dot I am show. So we can show the image. And it's going to take a window name and you can call it whatever you want. I'm going to call it face recognition. And then we have to call our RGB image variable. Then we are also going to call CV dot weight key and add the value of zero. And finally, the last thing we have to do is call two functions. The first one is to find the target face. And the second one is to render the image. And these are the only functions we need to make this program work. So now if we go ahead and right click on our program and click on run face recognition, you'll see that it will load, it will open up your file search. And this is in my downloads folder. So I have a special folder for politicians and make sure to find some photos of the people you want to recognize. You can put as many people as you want, but uh, let's go ahead and click on this one over here. So if everything went well, we should have an image of Boris and Trump being recognized. And as you can see right here, we have Boris recognized in the back and Trump recognized in the front. Now we can go ahead and run this program one more time and try it with a different image, such as this one over here. And here there are four people, one of which is Boris. So as you can see, it did not find Putin and it did not find Trump, but it did find Boris. And yeah, that's essentially all I wanted to show you in this tutorial. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section below and I'll do my best to look at them. Otherwise, as always, guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. See you.